This project is a diptych of two paintings. The left painting, titled Welcoming the Newcomers, is about the arrival of settler cultures to North America. And the right painting really speaks to the displacement of the first people of this continent. And it's called The Resurgence of the People. This was an incredible opportunity to really delve into a significant collection. I was really thinking about the Met as this colonial institution, this repository of world cultures, a place where millions of people visit every year from other parts of the world to look at representations of world cultures. So I was really thinking about the migrations of populations, but also the displacements of populations. European settler cultures coming to North America and displacing the original people, but also millions and millions of people immigrating to North America through this portal of New York uh, over many, many years. So the protagonist in these two paintings is my alter ego, Mischief Eagle Testicle. In the two paintings, she really represents indigenous perspectives and specifically Cree perspectives. So, Miss Chief in the first painting represents Sagitawan, which means love, and Wakotawan, which means kinship. In the second painting, Miss Chief represents a certain strength that comes from our teachings, which teach us how to actually get along with other cultures and how to get along with each other. When I inhabit that character of Miss Chief, it allows me to be present in history. And I think that's something that I can't do, just as Kent Monkman, the artist. I can really place Miss Chief deep, deep, deep into history, hundreds of years ago, thousands or millions of years ago. I've created her as this legendary being that's existed for millions of years. By putting Miss Chief into these historical moments, it, it makes history come alive by making it personal, by making it human. And so I have Miss Chief kind of living in these different time periods as a way to just connect people to the humanity, to the emotional experience of what it means to, to live through these historical experiences. So when I looked at the collection, I found a number of artworks that were made by settler artists that were looking at indigenous people or taking inspiration from indigenous people and often through that romantic lens from the 19th century. So romanticizing, but also reinforcing some of the themes that were popular of that period that we were vanishing, that you know indigenous people were disappearing. So my thinking around these, as it has been with some of my other works, is to refute that idea because we're still very much here. After I absorbed all of that material, I started to work on sketches, you know, that stage where I start to really composite all of the different ideas and themes and stitch the references to the different works together. And what I do here in my studio with my team is we go through each composition, through each drawing, and decide who each character is. We identify who all the characters are. And then we set about on a, on a process to cast all of the different models that we bring in and they're costumed. And then we shoot digital photographs. One of the advantages is that I have control over every aspect of this composition. Costumes are carefully selected and they're styled in a very specific way. And so I, my eye is on this entire process. And as I give the, these images to the painters, I, I can be assured that you know, they have exactly what I had in mind in terms of the vision for the piece. I looked at you know, sculptures like Hiawatha, Mexican Dying Girl. I also looked at Delacroix's painting, The Natchez, which really reinforces, again, this idea of the vanishing race. And then I also just looked at great paintings by Titian and Rubens. I was looking at the dynamism in the human figures and the tension of two figures interacting. And so I, you know, I take inspiration across a wide range of material like that. I looked at Manuel Leutz's painting of Washington crossing the Delaware. You know, here's this massive history painting that re really is about authorizing and, and valorizing Washington as, as a hero, of course, for America. But I wanted to do that with indigenous people too. I wanted to authorize us and, and, and hold us up in this history of the continent. I found that the painters that I admire, there was a process, there are stages to getting to that large-scale painting. The idea is to really work through all your compositional issues on a smaller scale, and by the time you get to the big painting, you have a roadmap. It's like having a really strong plan to, to get to your final composition.
The Great Hall is so vast that in order to really hold that space, the paintings had to be huge. I have about 18 assistants that cover a broad range of jobs and responsibilities in my studio from administrative work all the way up to you know, painting and fabrication. Your career is only going to advance as far as the amount of work that you can produce and the quality of work. So it was a way to enable myself to create more of the work that I wanted to create and to be more efficient at disseminating the work. It actually frees up my time for the creative part of what this is all about. The very core of this, this is about thinking about the ideas, the themes. It's incredible to collaborate with other artists, to have 18 other minds and hands all assisting means that the end result is, is greater because of the collaboration. In these two paintings, water is very significant. So you see these swells, huge swells of ocean in, in both of these paintings. And you know, with, with that, I'm speaking to climate change. I'm speaking about you know, rising sea waters. But I'm also using water to talk about the flood of settlers and, and the displacement, how, how rising sea waters actually will in the future also continue to displace people along the coastal areas. When I was looking into the museum's collection, I'm looking at a large collection of European art, Western art, and I can look at that tradition of art making as an outsider. I'm a Cree person, so in many ways I had this objective, clear view of the history of Western art. You know, looking at it, I, I see this great tradition of history painting that has been discarded, considered passé. So I've always thought about how much value that, that has as a viable medium, as a viable genre of creating images. And this is what I wanted to do with my own work, is make history paintings that speak to that rejection of history, that speak to that, that discarding of, of, of the past and that discarding of the traditions. When I reclaim history paintings from this tradition of European painting, in many ways I'm sending a clear message about how valuable all of our histories are.